Becoming transcendent also means that you must see yourself the way heaven sees you. Now, this can be an incredibly difficult thing to do. Nevertheless, if you want to transcend this natural realm, you must reprogram your mind in this way. As you know, we begin our lives by being born into a family. These families all have varying degrees of dysfunction. Some are godly while others are devilish, and still others abandon their children altogether. But in every case, this time of foundation and beginning is the starting point that we begin life with. Therefore, if we didn't have adults speaking into our lives and telling us who heaven has called us to be, then we begin life with a handicap and must figure it out for ourselves. Now the problem, however, is that we enter the educational system and experience peer pressure, which further skews our perception of who we really are as we seek to fit in. I was born again as a child at the age of nine, but I can recall vividly trying to fit in with the world. I remember being one way when I was around my church friends and another way when I was around my worldly friends the other six days of the week. But there were two cultures that were battling on the inside of me. I can recall trying to fit in with the world and being with my neighborhood friends. So I would try to curse like they did. One day, one of these worldly friends said to me, you don't even sound right cussing. What are you talking about? What kind of insult is that? What do you mean? Well, what he saw was something in me that he couldn't articulate that made me awkward when I tried to do things like the world. So I struggled throughout my formative years. On the one hand, I loved God deeply. On the other hand, I was trying to fit in with the world. This is the battle that we all go through. I also recall being in the ninth grade and because all of my other friends were taking the auto mechanics curriculum, I took it too. Well, let me tell you, that was an eye-opening experience. I consider myself to be a fairly intelligent person, but in that class, I was like a fish out of water. For all practical purposes, the teacher may as well have been speaking Greek because it all went right over my head. This is because I had no aptitude or desire for auto mechanics. It was not who I was called to be or what I was called to do. Therefore, I had no grace to do it. <laughs> I even remember the final exam. It was an open book test, but the book had a thousand pages. I remember telling the teacher after that brutal, never ending hour of an exam that if he passed me, I would get the heck out of that class. Why? Because I didn't belong there. Because that was not who I was or what I was called to do. So the next semester, what did I do? I had enough sense to transfer to another curriculum called commercial art, where I actually excelled. Well, this lesson applies to both the natural and the spiritual. So if we're going to see ourselves the way heaven sees us, we must reprogram our mind so that we think in line with our purpose. Now, this process is greatly aided and enhanced when there is a godly, spiritual, and heavenly-minded culture that we can be immersed into. You see, my problem was that I was only in the godly culture on Sundays and when I was at home. But the rest of the time, at school and when I was playing with my friends, I was immersed in a devilish culture. And although my parents were both in the home and loved God, they were trying to figure things out themselves. So although they provided a godly environment, I still didn't understand who heaven said I was. But thank God, 
that I began to renew my mind to the word of God. As I thought his thoughts, my thinking began to change. Then as I, I became hungry for God, I purchased books by spiritual leaders who could speak into my life and teach me how to think. As this happened, and as Holy Spirit began to change who I surrounded myself with, my mind began to be renewed. You see, the people you hang around with will shape your life and your destiny. If you hang around people who don't have purpose, then you will never ascend to your purpose. But if you hang around people who are pursuing purpose, it will motivate you and inspire you to pursue your purpose. In my case, I began to follow my spiritual inclinations. I was inclined to study. I was inclined to document things. I was inclined to write lessons and ultimately to teach. This is when I realized that heaven called me to be a teacher. And as I began to lean into that, I was able to walk in my purpose. Well, the same thing is true for you. Heaven has a purpose for your life, and God has given you certain gifts, talents, and abilities that are in line with the purpose that he has for your life. So by examining those gifts, talents, and abilities, you can begin to develop yourself so that when purpose locates you, you will be prepared. So do you want to transcend the world where the majority of people live and die never having fulfilled their purpose? Then you must see yourself the way heaven sees you and begin to walk in the path that God has laid out for your life.